Hey everybody, video here for you today. Now I talk a lot on my channel about different periods of history, but one thing I have talked consistently about since I started making videos is the Younger Dryas event. Whatever happened there, and I think it was 2012, one of my first videos I ever made where I talked, I talked about the possibility of an impact on the North American ice sheet. And uh, I was just fascinated in that time period, way back then, just because it was kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, it was just kind of a black hole. We did not know very much about it. So it's something I have been consistently looking into. And when I found Randall Carlson in 2013 or 14, that just opened up my eyes to a whole bunch of evidence that the North American continent went through a tremendous cataclysm about 12,000 900 years ago and then again maybe about 11,600 years ago and those dates have been kind of imprinted on my mind and when I talk about very ancient cultures in places like Syria or Turkey or even North America or other places it seems like certain things were happening right around those time periods but I think it's time to talk about how humans may have survived this cataclysm the more I read into this time period between 11,500 and 13,000 years ago roughly and the more I listen to other people talk about this time period that really investigated it, you just come to the firm understanding that the world totally changed. It was totally different, say, 15,000 years ago. And this really opened a new epoch of human history. Just the land changed. We lost so much due to sea level rise, maybe 350 to 400 feet. Took a lot of the coastline of Florida and other places away. The world totally changed. The megafauna, we had camels, elephants, saber-toothed cats, and they all disappeared in a really a geological instant. So what the heck happened? It must have been catastrophic. And if the large mammals, so many of them went extinct. And by the way, there is 33 different species that there is not one single piece of evidence that humans hunted those animals so what the heck happened the clovis wiping out the megafauna is one of the most ridiculous things i've ever learned or read about ancient american history going way back into this deep period so i think there are so many unanswered questions and it's just a fascinating piece of history to investigate and i've talked about places in florida oregon other places where People were seem to be living underground, maybe just to survive. I think Anthony uh, Zamora has talked about a human bottleneck in the human population at that time period. So I think it's time to investigate, put some dates to places, and figure out how humans survived this period of history. It seems in the past few years we are making more and more discoveries, putting specific dates on places. But what happened at the Younger Dryas boundaries? That is something that has always fascinated me. And the Clovis people, they seem to disappear, but there seem to be more cultures in America pre-Clovis and around the time of the Clovis. And I think we are starting to put together that history and the thought that the Clovis were the first people in North America becomes more and more absurd with all the evidence that comes out. But whatever happened at the end of the Younger Dryas and the beginning of the Younger Dryas, it seemed to be catastrophic. This is universe today, and it says almost 13,000 years ago, a comet impact set everything on fire. Darkness throughout the land, that is a myth from early, early history. And then the sun finally shines and becomes the thing people worship. But what happened 13,000 years ago? How did people survive? Vegetation must have been sparse. Game to hunt must have been sparse if all the large mammals died what happened to them where did they go it's all very fascinating to me but today we're going to go down to ohio i have talked a lot about mound sites in ohio and i even have one message what's the earliest site in ohio that we know about well today we're going to go down to a place this is called sheridan cave and it's right down here now this is the first of probably a few videos i will make on this subject and i've talked about it before people living in caves in different parts of North America around the time period 11 to 13,000 years ago. I've talked about the Natufians living in caves on the other side of the world at this time period. And of course we have Darren Kuyu 
in Turkey, that underground city, what is the exact purpose that was built for? I don't think we have a solid answer on that yet. But surviving the younger Dryas, if you really thought about it, would you think about a farm field out in northwest Ohio here, kind of in the middle of nowhere? Well, sometimes it's all about what's under our feet. A lot of history is just buried in the ground and has been covered up. And sometimes these places pop out. Why don't we go down and take a look at this? This is fascinating history down here. Here is the Sheridan Cave site today. This has a lot to do with geology, and this is part of a ancient cave system that people could tour in Ohio, and I, I will leave a few links below. It seems this place has maybe even been sealed off, but a pretty fascinating find. This has a lot to do with geology. When dolomite or limestone is formed, it has natural fractures in it. Then over time, water gets in there, maybe a lot of water, and it carves out a cave system called Karst. And that is what was formed here. But findings here, pretty, pretty amazing what they found in here. But this place got sealed off about 10,000 years ago by all the topsoil being piled on top of it by whatever natural process. So this cave system was sealed at the 10,000 year level. But the findings in here, this place was discovered in 1989. And then this place was researched over the subsequent years. I think the, fa oops, my stomach just growled there. I hope you didn't hear that. But findings over the years, pretty fascinating. And the dates that were put on this place, this is maybe the oldest occupation of a site recorded in Ohio. They have a historical marker right down here. Why don't we read that? Sheridan Cave, Indian Trail Caverns, and that is the tour people could take of this cave system in Ohio. First opened in 1927, it is one of many caves that occur on the Dolomite Ridge traversed by State Route 588 in Wyandotte and Hancock counties. Sheridan Cave, a car sinkhole associated with the caverns, was discovered in 1989. It has collected a remarkable record of Ice Age animal and human activity in its sediments. Excavations have revealed remains of many extinct late Pleistocene epic animals, giant beaver, um, stag, moose, flat-headed and long-nosed peccary, and that is kind of a type of a hog or pig, I believe, and short-faced bear, among many others, that were sealed in the cave by glacial deposits more than 10,000 years ago. Paleo-Indian tools, including projectile points and scrapers, are evidence of the earliest known human activity in this region. But one thing that added another dimension to this puzzle is that this place got sealed off by Ice Age deposits about 10,000 years ago. And if there was many karsts like this that were open a long time ago, how many others have been sealed off and just totally lost to history? We got lucky finding this place. So how much history is just right below our feet that we have no idea of that would lead to some pretty profound answers? I think that is an interesting thing to think about. But this site here, lost history right under the ground. Here's a story coming from three years ago from the University of Cincinnati, findings made in Sheridan Cave. And I believe I saw something on George Howard's Cosmic Tusk website about Sheridan Cave. And the Cosmic Tusk goes over the possible comet impact and here it says the skull and connecting mandibles of a 12,500 year old flathead peccary excavated from Sheridan Cave, Ohio, representing the most recent specimen ever dated and known to have lived. These bones were part of the last gasp of the last ice age. During the years of excavation work here, there was other extinct ice age megafauna found. There was evidence of human occupation, some projectile points, some places that there appeared to be fires and also a layer of platinum found. It says ancient platinum rain likely led to Earth's last big chill. UC anthropologist helps discover rare elements across North America, critical evidence for cosmic impact dating back to the onset of the last ice age. Here's the opening to Sheridan Cave when people were doing the research work in here. It says the discovery of widespread platinum found in soil layers at archeological sites across North America were found to coincide with the geological period called the Younger Dryas, an era of Earth's sudden cooling beginning about 12,800 years ago. 
The mysterious frozen epic also blamed for the eventual disappearance of the early woolly mammoth, Mastodon and saber-toothed tiger, lasted for over a thousand years. But the reasons for this rapid freeze remains unclear and may have been cause for ongoing scientific debate for decades. And one thing, there's a myth coming from prehistory about the hellish winters and what people did to survive. Of course, there's the myth of the Hopi Am people and the emergence of people from underground that started this current culture or this current civilization. So it's time to go find some of these sites where people were surviving the Younger Dryas. It says, Tankersley believes the presence of elevated platinum in soil layers found in several archaeological sites across the country, including his own work at Sheridan Cave in Ohio, confirms the data corresponding with the Younger Dryas onset reported in earlier Greenland ice core studies. That study recorded a possible source of platinum present in the sediment of Greenland that may be the result of an extraterrestrial comet impact, the study says. Here is a look inside the cave. It says, in recent findings summarized in a paper published this month in the prestigious journal uh, Nature Scientific Reports, the same platinum anomalies were found in the U.S. archaeological sites that date to the same time period. The paper, titled Widespread Platinum, Anomaly documented at Younger Dryas Onset in North America's Sedimentary Sequences is lead authored by Christopher Moore at the University of South Carolina and 12 researchers, including Tankersley, and represents the findings from 11 archaeological sites throughout the U.S. And if more cave sites were investigated deep down and thoroughly, how many more would produce this evidence of platinum in the sediment core, I wonder? It says Tankersley refers to the period of the Younger Dryas as the last gasp of the last ice age. It says our results show that platinum occurs in the ice age sediments in the U.S. This rare element can be found in periods that characterize atmospheric fallout from a cosmic impact. Here above ground, just non-distinct rural farmland, underground hints of a cosmic catastrophe that changed the course of the world. Humans trying to ride out maybe hellish winters underground here. A layer of platinum that certainly hints of a comet impact. And the Younger Dryas will always be debated. People think electrical storms, volcanoes. There was one report that volcanoes caused this. But certainly electrical storms and volcanoes could have been the result of a fragmented comet. I know we don't have a crater, but it could have been thousands of Tunguska-like events that certainly would have melted a heck of a lot of the ice cap all at once but here is the remains of one of these peccary here and i guess they were in abundance in this area of ohio these huge extinct hogs and that is just one of them found in this cave and the stuff that was found in here was pretty well preserved but researching the earth's history you just realize that humans are along for the ride and we are part of a bigger picture and current findings are kind of playing that out but it says, as with the supervolcano, Tankersley says the spike in the trace element of platinum is a fingerprint, fingerprint for widespread particulate matter that would have enriched particles in the atmosphere and led to global cooling. The researchers conclude that the presence of platinum is an easily identifiable hemispheric marker in sediment layers for the start of the Younger Dryas. This discovery contributes to the supposition that a potential cosmic impact event occurred which warrants further scientific investigation. Our results show this rare element platinum occurred in Ice Age sediments in the U.S. can be found in periods that characterize atmospheric fallout from a cosmic impact, and I know that I am repeating that. And here is the remains of a 12,500-year-old ancient peccary. The work at Sheridan Cave and Ken Tankersley was done in conjunction with people who owed Worked on sites like Blackwater Draw and Murray Springs, other famous sites that go back to the Younger Dryas. But here it says he is inspecting a close-up of an ancient black matte carbon layer with platinum found inside Sheridan Cave, dating precisely to the end of the last ice age and mass extinction event. I've used this website before. I will leave the link below, lithicastinglab.com. They have an interesting article on the Sheridan Cave site, Wyandotte County, Ohio. They have human artifacts coming from the site. They call it a deep Paleo-Indian cave site in Ohio. 
early Paleo Indian camp and food processing site. And here are some of the things found inside the cave, megafauna, human artifacts, some kind of point here, scrapers, maybe other things. Here is the entrance to the cave in 1989 upon discovery. And we really got lucky finding this place because it was totally covered up about 10,000 years ago. But here it says, picture taken 1989. It shows the beginning of the excavation project that would remove more than 15,720 cubic yards of sandy soil from the sinkhole known today as Sheridan Cave or the Sheridan Pit, named for the original landowner. And that's the way it goes with a lot of these ancient American sites, named after the landowner. These pics come from Keith Hendricks, and I believe he is the property owner. It says a ladder was installed to access the excavation. Here is the ladder descending down into the cave site here. This has been pretty much covered up, I believe, today. And it says here, bone spear point and notes just after discovery, human artifacts found in this cave that was sealed up 10,000 years ago. Now, you will find barely anything on YouTube about Sheridan Cave, but I think this place should be talked about. I think it adds a very important piece to the whole puzzle of what actually went on. But the property owner here is Keith Hendricks. He let you tour this place before it was sealed up, and I think it's sealed up now, if I read correctly. But here is a look inside of a cave system where people might have been riding out the Younger Dryas. And I will be talking more about this, but I think this place deserves to be talked about. One of the few places that we have humans occupying a site during the Younger Dryas, but fascinating finds in here. Megafauna, human occupation, fires, a layer of platinum. This is one of the more fascinating sites I've investigated recently. The remains of a few different species were found in here. Here is the stag moose that was found in here. These ancient peccaries found in abundance at the site. And there was also a giant short-faced bear found here. And I think this drawing is a little conservative. When these stood on their hind legs, these were twice as tall as modern grizzly bears. If you want to read more about the specifics, I will leave links below. But the dating on here, the ancient megafauna and the human activity in the cave seems to be boxed into that younger driest window. I will leave links below. I just thought this was a fascinating place to talk about today. Evidence of extinct megafauna, other discoveries in here is just part of the big picture. You got to be thorough when investigating ancient mysteries. Sometimes the answer will just kind of present itself instead of you having to go look for it. But that is an ancient cave site in Ohio I have not talked about before. Maybe the earliest occupation in Ohio was found at this site. Not many sites in North America that we have evidence of humans living during the Younger Dryas. This is a video I needed to make. This is the site today in Ohio. What's under our feet? That is where all the answers lie. But glad to make this one today. I'm kind of hurrying finishing. I got things to do today. But if you have any comment on that, if you live near that site, I'd like to hear from you. But that is a video on ancient America coming from Ohio. Maybe the most ancient spot in Ohio as far as human occupation. Hope you thought that was interesting. And you all have a very nice day.